Hey, Brian. Sorry. Um, I want to get right back with you because, um, and thank you for, you know, send, send, sending that video in and say that I'm pretty sure I'm going to title this, you know, there's, there's hope for Brian because, you know, a couple of things because, you know, you start out by saying, you know, I'm not convinced anywhere about anything, but my objectives are to see something like a more equitable distribution of the benefits of, of, of uh, you know, our, the wealth of our society. And <clears throat> that's enough for all those uh, distractions. And uh, uh, it's a way that is, you know, it has a soft impact on the on the uh, uh, earth. And by the way, thanks for doing that in in, in your t-shirt. Because if you do that in your t-shirt, then I can do my reply on my t-shirt. And if you go visit Dr. Sent's video, he did his whole lecture in his t-shirt. Okay, so T-shirts are us. And back to your point about you know the impact on the environment. I I, I actually had wore this T-shirt yesterday. Okay, I wore it to sleep last night. I haven't taken a shower yet this morning. I got up and I got onto this box because early <clears throat> before my wife was up, I was downstairs watching Squawk Box and Dr. Steve wrote uh, you know, Steve Roach is an economist, but he's not a doctor. He used to work for the Fed one of the top economists now at Yale University, and he has his big things about macroeconomics, was the guest on uh, Squawk Box this morning. And I came up here because I wanted to write a, um, you know, post a question to Squawk Box and to Steve Roach, which I did and which I could get into later. But uh, but point is that I so, I, so I've been up, sat down, no shower, still wearing my t-shirt from yesterday that I wore out in the yard all day. And when I stood up to make the adjustment to the um, uh, <clears throat> to the light, um, and it came down, and I realized that I was wearing my Institute for Sustainable Communities, which is my old softball team in Vermont, um, that I you know that I played softball with when I was fortunate enough to have a softball team to play for. To show that, and by the way, my best friend, you know, one of my Kettle Pond board members. Um, uh, as the director of this uh, Institute for Sustainable Communities. And, uh, you know, so my heart has been there always. And one more little aside, Brian, okay, about the difference between the Fed and the non-Fed is this, that my dad, again, if, you know, you may know this, but my dad, Christian capitalist, businessman, pillar of the community, largest employer in the county at the time, at one time, um, was a monetary reformer. I was a pacifist, an environmentalist, social equality seeker, okay, a socioeconomic quality seeker. And my dad told me this, Brian, Joey, you don't fix the money system. You'll never fix that stuff. And that's what I'm saying to you. Okay. So congratulations to you uh, for your perspective, you know, that you bring to what the kind of things that you want to see. And I can only promise you that fractional reserve banking and the Fed are not going to give them to you. We're not going to provide them to you. Now, having said that, I have to do have to put my glasses back on because I made some notes that I wanted to reply, reply to. <laughs> I loved it when you say, I, I know enough so that I have good reason to be confused, and, and, and I'm sure that you do. <clears throat> and, 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 you know, because this video was kind of brief and it just kind of talked about your, 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 your back and forth, um, you, should, you should be pursuing, you know, exactly your, your you know, kind of angle on, on, on this thing. Because, you know, because you have an open mind and because you have the things, your own goals that you're seeking. Um, and your, to your questions about, you know, about, uh, well, let's say the problem of the underground economy, you know, and, and the money supply, you know. Um, you, know always, you know, you always say, well, well, well what is the money supply, actually? Money supply M1, cash and check and deposits. Is it M2, which 
squared, which then includes savings, which is the bulk of things. Is it M3? How about a question for the, for the Fed? Why don't we have M3 as the, as the money metric? So when you say to have the right amount of the money supply, and, and so it's, it's the pushing on the, str pushing on the string theory, okay? The object is the money supply quantity. Take take a measure and then say what how it's going to you know be reflective of that quantity uh, determination, and then instead of saying okay we're going to make sure that that's what happens no instead we push on the interest rate strength okay trying to influence demand for and uh, to, uh, trying to influence strictly the demand for it, okay uh, for money and then as a result of that influence to determine you know the supply of money. Now it's it's an insane way of doing things. You know, it's an insane way of doing things. It doesn't work in reverse. Okay, it does not work in reverse. None of nothing about the fractional reserve banking system works in reverse. And I remind you of my question to President uh, Bullard again at the at the Minsky conference. So I'm in Minsky conference put on by the Levy Economics Institute and the Ford Foundation in New York City every year. I'm fortunate enough that they that I get to go. Um, which I questioned of Mr. Bullard, wasn't the Fed responsible, really, by its lack of doing the kind of things that you talked about with Madoff, you see? Because Madoff, the, the Madoff question to the Fed is easily pushed aside to the SEC. But the SEC's role is to only to watch over those things that are in place. The Fed's role is to determine how much leveraged speculation there can be in existence at any point in time by virtue of changes to the laws that regulate finance. Okay, that's the, that's the Fed's role, okay? So the Fed's role was to say, oh, we want more of this stuff. We want more deregulation. We want more leveraged speculation. So the Fed's failure to police the money, the debt money especially, the debt industry or the debt money industry, its failure leads to the increase in leverage speculation. When there's an increase in leverage speculation, the things that serve as money become uh, uh, opaque, right? Okay, that's why Madoff could say, you know, well, I've got these secret things out there. Well, there was lots of secret things out there, you know. Well, then, and that's why the Fed can put it put it on that. But back to my point to Bullard, you know, wasn't it the Fed, you know? I happen to be sitting next to Dr. Michael Hudson. I don't know if you know who Dr. Michael Hudson is, but he's really one of my favorite uh, economists. Writes all the time on naked capitalism and uh, Roosevelt 2.0, Roosevelt Institute, and and, and and guys. And he's always at the Minsky conference. He's always at the monetary reform conference. He's an advisor to Congressman Dennis Kucinich, just so you know. Um, and, uh, you know, when Bullard pretended to not understand my question, which is the same point that I just raised right there, okay, um, you know, Hudson leaned over and said to me, <laughs> he said, if you think any of the Fed presidents is going to be the one to admit that it was the Fed's failure to, uh, to, uh, to police, uh, you know, the, the uh, finance industry uh, that caused the crash, he says, you got another thing coming, you know. He says, but he understood the question perfectly. So that's my point, Brian. Okay, that 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 that, that that's where the Fed is at with me. I, I appreciate your commentary here. I know that you sent another video. I'm going to stop this one and go watch the other one because I haven't watched it yet. And 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 thanks for being there and who you are.